don't give up your life to keep somebody else happy that won't keep a relationship with you if you don't let them control you. I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. As you know, we've all been hurt. There's nobody in here that hasn't been hurt. You know my story, I was sexually abused by my father. I was trying to think the other day what, what my first memory was as a child. And I was even kind of surprised myself. The first thing I ever remember is being afraid of my dad. He was just mean, just mean. And he had a spirit of lust that didn't just affect me, but anybody that he got around. And I'm not here to tell that story tonight, but by the time he got finished with me, I was a mess. And he didn't, he controlled me with fear. Just fear. I was so afraid of him. And I went to a couple different people, an aunt and uncle and somebody else in the family, and they didn't want to get involved. And so I just remember saying, okay, nobody's going to help me. I'm going to survive this. Now listen. And I said, said to myself, as soon as I'm 18 and I graduate from high school, I'm leaving home, I'm getting out of here, and I'm going to get a job, and I'm going to take care of myself, and I am never going to ask anybody for anything. Well, I made a few promises to myself that I had to undo later on in life. <laughs> but... I decided that I was going to make it through it. Come on. You, you can't make it through anything if you don't decide you're going to. You have to make a decision. Don't Stop using that, I can't stand this. I can't do this. This is too much. I can't stand this. I can't take this. I can't take this one more day. God will never put more on us than what we can bear, but with every temptation, He will always provide the way out, a safe escape to a landing place. And I don't know what some of you are going through, but I know enough about people to know that probably some, in this room tonight, there's probably some pretty awful things going on behind the scenes. It may be your kids that are in trouble, it may be a married marriages that are in trouble. It may be things from your past that you've never dealt with. And, and yes, when you think about everything you're going to have to go through to face all those issues and deal with them, it can be pretty daunting. And it's kind of like, mm -hmm. But do you want to live with the pain forever? Or do you want to start getting well? Okay, now I'm gonna, I, I, I've got a few things to say that I think are very important. So listen to this. Here comes one of them. We have to start making right choices while we're still hurting. I'm going to pause and let's think about that for a minute. Whoever said that you have to feel like doing what's right to do it? How many people do you think there are in here or watching by television that are mad at somebody and they won't forgive them because they, they don't feel like it? You, well, Joyce, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter. And I don't say it doesn't matter because I don't care. God said you forgive. And Satan gains more ground in the lives of believers through unforgiveness than any other single thing. That's his favorite thing, is to get you mad at somebody, to cause division between us, 
division between nations, division between races, division in marriages, division between siblings. He wants to divide us so we have no power. And each one of us has to make a decision that we are not going to stay mad at somebody. And I say this probably in every message that I preach and probably always will because I'm not joking when I say it's the single biggest problem we have in the church. Angry people who won't, won't forgive. And you don't have to feel. You know, love is not a feeling. It's the decision you make about how you're going to treat somebody. And forgiveness, I mean, you, you can pray to forgive somebody and you, know, you probably won't feel any different about them. And so then you assume you didn't forgive them. But really, God's just asking you to do your part. You say, God, I want to forgive. I want to be obedient to you. And I forgive them. And then you start praying for them, which is what the Bible says to do. God says, bless and do not curse them. And, and to bless means to speak well of, and to curse means to speak evil of. So you got to quit telling everybody what they did to you. Come on, this is just a little short lesson. And if they need help, you help them. And, oh. I just got a hold of this one two weeks ago. Gosh, I thought, God, how deep are we going to go? And if they have something bad happen in their life, and you're kind of happy about it, <laughs> listen to this. The Bible says that your sin is worse than what they did to you. I got one lady out here that claps when I say good stuff, but uh, you know. And you know, I mean, I've done it. Well, they got what they deserve. <laughs> I knew you'd get yours sooner or later. <laughs> and the Bible says that my sin is, gr is greater than what they did to me. And I'm like, well, you're just not going to let us wiggle out of this any way, shape, or form, are you? <laughs> We got to pray for them, love them, not talk bad about them, help them if they're in trouble, and we can't even be happy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, David had a different deal than we did. He said, God, break their teeth in their mouth. <laughs> you ought to go look at some of the stuff David said about his enemies. I don't know what happened between Psalms and Matthew, but it sure, I know what happened. Jesus happened, amen. And see, he came with a whole different message. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Two things God's asking for us, faith and love. Trust him, love people. If we do that, we don't have to be concerned about anything else. So we have only three choices. You can decide to not which, tonight which one you want. You can press past your pain now and start doing what you know you should do, whether you feel like it or not. You can press past the pain later and be miserable until then. Or you can keep the pain forever. <laughs> well, you know, this is one of those ouch hallelujah messages. You know what that is? A woman told me one time after I preached something probably similar to this, she said, man, that message tonight about every other word you said, I was going, ouch, ouch, <laughs> ooh, ooh. But she said, I know a year from now I'll be going, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. How many of you think that you can do what's right whether you feel like it or not? <laughs> oh, this is funny. 
Maybe 10 people put their hand up big. A few more did this. And then they were kind of like, not sure. I'm not gonna let you go home till you get this. You can do what is right, whether you feel like it or not. Now, one of my things used to be when Dave made me mad, my walls went up and I was not gonna talk to him. <laughs> Shutting you out, you won't hurt me again. Anybody else ever done that? Well, now, as soon as the wall gets about halfway built, God makes me take it down. And then he makes me talk to him. You say, well, how does he make you? Well, he doesn't really make me, but I love God and I want to do what he wants me to do. Amen. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. Did you hear me? Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. He didn't say if you feel like it. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. He did not say, if you obey me, I will love you. He has already decided to love us while we were still yet in sin. And we are to respond to that great gift that he's given us by walking in obedience to him, whether it feels good or it doesn't. Amen. You have to have the right mindset. You got to set your mind. How about doing that? How about setting your mind tonight? I don't, I'm, I'm not, not going to live by how I feel anymore. I'm going to live on the other side of my feelings. I've got a good book on living beyond your feelings. Matter of fact, I got a good book on everything. <laughs> because I had every problem that you could possibly have. I think Dave's been married to 20 different women because I'll change a little, and then he's got a different wife, and then I'll change some more, and he's got a different wife. <laughs> now he's got a really good wife. <laughs> See, he's down there, he turned to Penny, he said, what'd she say, huh? <laughs> and I've got a microphone on. He tells me that he hears fine that I mumble. <laughs> set your mind and keep it set on things above, on right things. You know, don't, don't think about everything that's wrong with your kids. How about thinking about a few things that's right with them? Remember, you wanted them. Don't think about everything that's wrong with that person you married to. You beg God to give you somebody. <laughs> now you got them. And you know, if you really don't want them, there's probably some lonely man or woman that would take them off your hands. <laughs> think about the good things. Set your mind and keep them set on things that are above. Okay, here we're going to have another one of these icky scriptures. This is icky scripture night. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2 amplified. So since Christ suffered in the flesh, I want to wait till they get it up there because I want you to see it. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2. There you go. So since Christ suffered in the flesh for us and for you, arm yourselves with the same thought and purpose patiently to suffer rather than fail to please God. For whoever has suffered in the flesh, and I'm talking about dying to self. I'm not talking about
Like I said, I'm not talking about disasters. I'm talking about just being willing to die to self. He said, I, I've set my mind. See, it's so important to set your mind. Have a talk with yourself. Like, Mike and Penny fly in a little bit before we do, and they get, get us checked into the hotel and get some things ready so we can pay attention to this stuff when we get here. And so I always ask Penny what the hotel's like. And she was kind of quiet for a minute. She said, it's spacious. I said, uh-oh, what else is it like? She said, um, it's rustic. <laughs> well, see, I already knew I was in trouble, so I prayed before I got there, God, please help me not to complain about anything in that room because I am just thrilled to be here and that you let me do this. Yeah. Amen. I set my mind before I got to the hotel room that I wasn't going to let it make me unhappy. Amen. Yeah. You can set your mind in the morning. I am not going to let anybody or anything make me unhappy today because the joy of the Lord is my strength is this helping anybody all right patiently to suffer rather than fail to please God for whoever has suffered in the flesh having the mind of Christ is done with intentional sin has stopped pleasing himself and the world and now pleases God. So then you can no longer spend the rest of your natural life living by his human appetites and desires, but now he lives for what God, for God's will. The Bible says that Jesus endured the cross for the joy of the prize that was on the other side. And that's what I'm proposing that we all do. We endure these things for the reward that's laid up for those who are willing to pay the price to mature spiritually so they can be usable material for God. Vessels fit for the master's use. Amen? Yeah. Are you understanding me? Yeah. It's time to get rid of our pacifiers, our baby bottles. Dave and I have a three and a half year old grandson. He's the youngest one out of the 12. And he says to his parents, I don't like it when you tell me no. I thought, well, at least he's telling how he feels early. <laughs> I don't like it when you tell me no. And then he will repeat back to them things that they've said to him. He will say, you need to be more patient with me. <laughs> or, or how about this one? You're being rude. <laughs> because, you know, They've told him, you know, you're, you're being rude. <laughs> well, you know, that's cute at three and a half. <laughs> but it's not cute at 50. <laughs> it's not cute when you've been in the church 15 years. <laughs> but I tell you, I need to come here more often.
trying to figure out where I want to go from here. You know, just a, just a small list of the types of, of feelings that we need to live on the other side of. What about this feeling that I got to please people all the time, keep everybody happy? Anybody tired of being a people pleaser? Don't. Don't give up your life to keep somebody else happy that won't keep a relationship with you if you don't let them control you. What is the absolute worst thing that can happen if you stand up to them? They're not going to want anything to do with you anymore. Well, they don't care very much about you anyway if the only way they're going to have a relationship with you is if they can control you. Love is not controlling people. God doesn't control people. Everybody needs to have freedom. And not only that, you'll miss your destiny if you, if you spend your time trying to please people. Amen? Galatians 1.10, Paul said, Now am I seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not now be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I would have missed my destiny. I would have missed my calling if I would have been trying to please people. How about... Um, living on the other side of the pain of being misunderstood. That, you know, that, to me, that's a hard thing. You know, when, when you're just doing the best you know how to do and people just don't get you, or they think things about you that just aren't true, or say things about you that aren't true, and you know, we can judge sin, we should judge sin, but we're not supposed to judge people because we don't know their heart. And Moses, there's a scripture that says that he expected that his brethren would understand that he had been called to deliver the people, but they did not understand. Well, you know, I started thinking, and you know, really, when God called me to preach, I, th I, I was just so tickled and so happy, and I thought everybody would be happy for me. And you know what? They weren't. They had plenty, they had plenty to say about why I couldn't do it. First one I heard was, well, you're a woman. Well, you know I had mentioned that to God, too. I said, you know, I'm a woman. You think he didn't know that? I don't know. Maybe God would have given the job to a man if he could have found one to take it. I don't know. You know, all I've done for 45 years is work, but I've enjoyed it. I can't stand to waste my life. And you know, if, if Jesus would take me home tomorrow, I've had a good ride and I've helped a lot of people. I'll tell you one thing I will not die with is regret. Amen? But people didn't understand me. They didn't, I mean, we lost friends. We got asked to leave our church. I mean, it was painful. It was a very hard time. But now I'm on the other side of that. <laughs> and I got a few friends now. At least a handful anyway. <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you. See, the Bible tells us 
over and over that God is a rewarder. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks, and the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited-time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace.